Okay, we rolling. What's happening, man? This is Da Vinci. And guess where we at, man? Woke up in the morning to an empty crib. Got dressed and went outside like this is weird. Why the fiends ain't freaking? The boys ain't patrolling shit. Ain't nobody eating still. I gotta stay poised. Then I dip into my... Oh, yeah, yeah. See that? I ain't even never knew they had this before. The new film ball. Ain't that some shit? That was crazy, man. Fillmore, the legendary Fillmore district where I was born October 19th, 1982, man. This is the place, man. This is where all my inspiration to do what I do come from, you feel me? As you can see, we're standing back in front of a, a legendary mural. This is what Fillmore is known for. This is what it stands for. And this, I'm an offspring from that. I'm just trying to keep the legacy going, you feel me, as far as but just bringing hip-hop flavor to it, you feel me? I mean, as far as the history of Fillmore, man, it goes it goes deep, you know what I'm saying? Back to the 50s, 60s, and 70s, when my family first came here, you know what I'm saying? My pops, you know what I'm saying? He got his starting music right here too, you know what I'm saying? He's a blues and jazz singer, you feel me? And at that time, they was calling it the Harlem of the West. You feel me? It was like the black mecca of the whole West Coast as far as culture, you know what I'm saying? And bringing music and infusing people together from different communities and different places. Now, obviously, like 10, 20, 30 years later in the 80s and the 90s, you know, when blues and all that kind of fizzled out a little bit, you know, it was hip hop, man. And, you know, shout out to a lot of the dudes who started it, man. JT, the bigger figure, rapping Fote, San Quinn, you know what I'm saying, and Demo, the youngster. You know what I mean? Those were the dudes who inspired me to first start rapping when I was a young dude. And the film that I grew up around was all independent, man. We, we were raised on doing things independent, independent businesses, independent musicians, you know what I'm saying, keeping 100% 100 uh, ownership of everything we do, you feel me? So we're gonna take y'all around a little bit, tell you how, to, how it transformed over the years, but just to let you know, it still is Filmo and it still is real and it still is 100% ours, baby. Yep. Okay, well, this particular barbershop was opened back in 1952. It was located down on Ellis, where I film by my uncle. And we stayed there, he stayed down there till 1968. And the redevelopment of him in this spot, the 1551 Fillmore in 1968. And we've been here ever since. And we used to be all Afro Americans up and down this shop with Japanese and Koreans, but no more. Now it's all Koreans. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. What was Fillmore like then compared to how it is now? Oh, back in the day, they used to have. Uh, all kind of jazz clubs, uh, barbershops, beauty shops, barbecue places, lemons barbecue, and uh, the whole nine yards. And then the redevelopment came through, and uh, they, they relocated everybody. And what they did was they moved a lot of buildings, they tore down a lot of buildings, and gave everybody a certificate of preference to come back into the area after they demolished it. And it stayed vacant for about, what, 25, 30 years, this whole area down here. And what they did with the vacant, with the vacant area was kind of cute. The redevelopment gave uh, some of the older people a certain plots to plant gardens on. They call them victory gardens. Right. So that's what they did, and that's where we used to get our stuff from until Safeway moved in. Then Safeway moved in, and they kind of knocked that out. And then they uh, they moved in this high rise down here called the Fillmore Center. Right. Yeah, they did it to I think the guy was Jewish because his name was Tishman or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't afford that, and we couldn't afford to come back. Like before, they started all this regenerification, whatever you want to call it. Like on a Saturday, we would have people halfway down the block. We'd have to give out numbers on a Saturday for people to get a haircut. Now, we need to give out numbers for them to come in. <laughs> and it is yeah. a Saturday right now. It's Saturday, yeah. yeah. But as far as the future concerned, concern, I'll have to phrase my car in it, I said before. Feel more? No more. <laughs>
is gentrification is the soundtrack to how I grew up. I grew up in the 90s, you feel me? And this shit started happening in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? And it's not just my story, it's everybody else's story in film mode, you know what I'm saying? I started hustling in the 90s, you feel me? I started, I lost my virginity in the 90s, you feel me? For real, like you, you get influenced by the shit that happened around the time where, you know, you start experiencing a whole lot of different things, you feel me? So, I felt like that would be the whole theme to the album just because that's the time that time frame that I grew up in. I just want to tell the complete story. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it is some gun talk, it's some murder and violence on the album. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, I, it's just not on the forefront. You dig? Because Fillmore is too dynamic for me. Like I grew up and seen, and I, and I know the whole history. So for me to tell the story and just one sided, like you wouldn't be able, to, you wouldn't get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's dope. Yeah, it's crime. You know what I'm saying? But. The culture and, and the music, you know what I'm saying, and the community and the family was what was trying to keep that away. You know what I'm saying? Like that was was the, the, the like the basis of of what Filmo is all about. You know what I'm saying? They took my CDs, they took my flyers, you know what I'm saying? And took the little eighth of weed I had on me and would just show me uh, their little whatever the fuck it was, but it was like a little uh, rap sheet for Tupac. And it was like, look, Tupac's first arrest was right here in Central Booking where you at right now. I'm like, man, what kind of shit is that for police to say to an 18 year old kid? 